city bus and found a vacant seat. I thought I saw my future bride walking up the street. I shouted to the driver, he can build the new bus. Slow down, I think I see you living up the bus. Baby, honey, is that you? We've derived the Navier-Stokes equations, and normally at this point we would make the finite difference substitutions for the derivatives and start working through some examples. However, we have a sticky wicket in this instance. We can make the substitutions into the momentum equations and get computational equations for the velocities u and v. However, the fluid state is defined by the values of u, v, and p, the fluid pressure, and we don't have an equation for fluid pressure. And while we use the continuity equation several times in the derivation of the momentum equations, we don't have a way to enforce the continuity equation when calculating u and v. So, what to do? Fortunately, there is an easy ad hoc approach that provides solutions to both problems. We will derive a Poisson equation for calculating the value of pressure at time t n given the values of u and v at time t n, and the solution to the Poisson equation for pressure at time t n will enforce the continuity equation at time t n plus 1. So let's see how this works. First we derive the Poisson equation for pressure starting with the momentum equations and making the FDM substitutions for the time derivatives only as shown. Differentiating the first equation with respect to x and the second with respect to y, we have the two equations shown at the bottom of the page. Note that we have second derivatives of pressure inside the parentheses and that we have grouped all the derivatives of u and v inside the parentheses and replaced them by dots. We'll see why on the next slide. Now we add the two equations at the bottom of the previous page with the result shown on the first line. We enforce the continuity equation at time t n plus 1 by setting the left side of the equation to 0. And the resulting equation gives us a Poisson equation for p in terms of the derivatives of u and v at time t n. Noting that when dt is small, rho divided by dt is orders of magnitude greater than rho, so we can drop the last term in the equation, giving us the Poisson equation at the bottom of the page, and this is the equation we'll use to compute fluid pressure. Now we're ready to make the FDM substitutions and compute. First we have the FDM substitutions for the momentum equations. The substitution for the X momentum equation is shown. Moving everything but u n plus 1 to the right of the equal sign gives the computational equation as shown at the bottom of the page. Next we have the FDM substitutions for the Poisson equation for fluid pressure. We'll solve the Poisson equation to get a solution for fluid pressure using Gauss-Seidel iteration. Note that the right-hand side is a constant during the Gauss-Seidel iteration procedure, so we can evaluate the right-hand side before the iteration and assign the values to an array B. The computational equation for P is shown at the bottom of the page. Here is the first page of the code for the entire computational loop. The outer loop is the time-stepping loop. The first task is to create the B array for calculating P. Then there is the inner Gauss-Seidel loop for computing P at time T n.
And finally, the code for computing u n plus 1 and b n plus 1. So it's time to put all these equations to work. We will simulate the flow of liquid in a pipe. The diagram shows the dimensions of the pipe, and by Jove, it's a square, but it could just as easily have been a rectangle. We need boundary conditions. Fluid flow at a physical boundary, the walls of the pipe, is zero in both directions. So that's easy and is implemented with Dirichlet boundary conditions. Also, the pressure is not changing in the direction perpendicular to the wall, so that provides a Neumann boundary condition for pressure. We will create a pressure differential in the pipe so that the water will flow by assigning a pressure of 5 newtons per meter on the left or inlet side and 2 newtons per meter on the right or outflow side with Dirichlet boundary conditions. And we will assume that the horizontal and vertical velocities are not changing at the inlet and outlet, so we have Neumann boundary conditions for U and V. The parameters for the simulation are the grid is 40 by 40, mu is 0.5, and rho is 1. Here is an animated version of the output. The assignment is to program the channel flow sim.